these your comrades? Not yet. There. It must be them. Let's go. The, the reason why London was chosen actually was more of a question of, uh, of uh, London being the perfect place to set uh, the storyline and the IP that we wanted to build. Um, interestingly enough, uh, uh, London was an epi epicenter of a lot of things in the, those times, trade, uh, the, uh, mainly trade and people, diversity was there, um, a lot of diversity actually in the, in, in the, in the country itself. And, uh, and specifically the fact that, uh, you know, UK, the, 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 the realm had a co you know, colonial army that had gone all over the world and had brought in a lot of trade in, which made it perfect for us to basically build this world that had different types of people. It wasn't just one track. Uh, and the other beauty about London was just, uh, was just the visual beauty of London. Uh, there is something so amazing about the streets of London, the mix of architecture that we really research and try to bring into this place. And, uh, and build a world that was believable for the order 1886. Um, when all was said and done, when, we, when I first wrote the story and by the time we wanted to do this, it was a natural choice to make London the first place that we wanted to see in the game. Stop for a pint, did you? Dishonored, uh, Bioshock have taken you know different different ideas from everything. I think Bioshock actually is a lot more steampunk in in the way that you know you they, it uh, it shows technology and and things like that. Dishonored has a feel of like a very uh, 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 like a dystopia. It's like it's it's different in the way that it's not completely real. Uh, what we wanted to inspire itself from is to ground it much more in reality um, and not not more too much in fantasy. That's the reason why the world we build is a lot more grounded in the actual time and the actual era of London. As far as inspiring ourselves from other games, I think there are a lot of games that inspire us. I mean, of course, there are great games out there. I can't tell you if there's any specifics as such that we, uh, we you know, hone, hone in on. But, uh, but uh, of course, there are, there are great things that they do. Uh, there's not anything that I would say is the same in any of these games that we do in ours. But uh, we always, you know, love good games, and we always get inspired by great games out there. Uh, we're going to see actually part of uh, things that are inspired by the Arthurian lores. Uh, we uh, we are not uh, delving right now too much into detail onto that. But for example, like we talked about, you know, the code names that they were given, uh, the fact that they're knights. There are other things that uh, that are going to come out and that are part of the story. But uh, it will be too early to reveal to the player today. <laughs> Lafayette. Not to worry, Monsieur. So we saw two characters today, uh, Sir Galahad and, uh, and uh, Lafayette, General Lafayette. The difference between the two characters is that uh, uh, we, one, uh, one actually is a, is, a, is a seasoned knight, somebody actually who's been there for a while and who's fought for a while. On the other side, Lafayette is more of a new rookie kind of knight where he hasn't done as much. Uh, and he's actually not a knight yet, but he's a, he's a newer person to the order. The interesting thing about the two characters also is the play that we can have between the two. Uh, um, they, uh, they feel very different because, of, of course, they're, they're written very differently as far as uh, the acting parts. And also one, of course, is, as you saw, is French. The other one is, uh, is British. Um, all of that actually builds into making really great storylines, you know, with, uh, with uh, characters that are very diverse. Um, beyond the two characters, there's uh, Lady Grey and there's uh, Sir Percival. All of these characters have really their, their role into, into how the game is going to play out and also how the story is going to be told. I'm making it my business to find out. Uh, uh, begging your pardon, sir. You need it upstairs. That's our cue. The game is, is mainly a, a shooter and a third-person shooter, but we've tried as much as possible to give moment-to-moment uh, -moment gameplay that would change all the time. From the demo you saw today, uh, the reason why we picked that specific demo is because we were able to show how uh, diverse the gameplay could be in a very short amount of time. Um, it's, uh, it's the point for us is really not to rely too much on one mechanic, but to really rely on the balance of that experience to give the player a different kind of uh, uh, experience throughout a game. Um, so although we will rely on what core players and regular players uh, want out of shooters, we do try to break it away from, uh, from that with uh, some of the stuff we use and also a bunch of the mechanics we're going to be showing in the future. Because we chose to make a story-driven game, uh, game, it is not open. It's not going to be the place where you just can do anything you want to. There are different paths once in a way that happen, but the, the idea is really to tell a story. And because of that, we're, we're kind of you know, guiding people through, through a more you know, uh, story-driven linear gameplay.
its protectors so few. We showed the gameplay and the demo in Whitechapel because Whitechapel was uh, one of the places we wanted to delve on. We mentioned the Royal Hospital in there as well. Uh, there was, I'm sorry, the London Hospital in there. Um, of course, there's other places that we'll go to, uh, you know, in the game that uh, that we haven't yet talked about. But uh, we're very much hoping that people will be able to go to places that they recognize and that they've been to in London. Uh -huh.